Hi. My name is Neb Kamus Sen Atumroy. Today, we will make a slight change. We will be listening to a city of the master teacher entitled The Children of God. We no longer have to do women have souls according to the Bible. This was from a WBKZ radio taping number 35. And for those who are tired of the devil taking control over everything in their lives and the lives of their children, this program is set up for those who want to be in God's kingdom here on earth. According to the scripture, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, we must take back control of our lives. We, the Egyptian Church of Karaz and Christ Incorporated, are reaching out to embrace all the children of God, as it states in Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Next, you will be listening to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Malachi Z. York L. in question and answer form. It says that the Lord God breathed into his nostrils the into breath his of life, life, the breath of the life, breath of life. Uh, and man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. So in this verse, it's only talking about man. So oh, yeah, the fact that you, the word they use is Adam. Right. When, you, in, when you're reading your Bible in English, in the King James Version, they knowingly and willingly left out the word Adam. Who's reading that book in, in Hebrew? Read that and put Adam in there and take man out. Because that's what's in there in Hebrew. Go ahead, read it now. The Lord God formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. That's what's in there in Hebrew. You know what people should be trying to find out now in church? Why did they take that out? Why did they say man? When there's a Hebrew word throughout the Bible they use for man, which is ish, when they want to use it, why did they hide that? Why? Because they can't explain it. They don't want to tell men, or especially in Christianity or the monotheistic religion, Judaism and Christianity, they're linked to God. Because it would, it would eliminate the ministers, it would eliminate the fathers and the popes and the imams and all the scholars, because every individual would know they have a link directly to God as a son of God, a part of God, and in fact a God. Whether they say capital G is only however escape they use anthropomorphism in the Bible is really revealing that God has arms, legs, eyes, cries, talks, walks, feels like every other mortal being you come in contact with. You follow? And there's a, there's a similarity between Adam and God. And that similarity is right there when you're saying that God, which is called the boundless universe, the Elohim, right, or Yahweh Elohim, put into this thing he created from the dust of the ground. But people forget that when you get the dust of the ground is being shaped, it's also life. Mm -hmm. Because it's earth. And anywhere you find earth, earth people are going to find living things. That's just his talk about just the shell of a man. But then they put a divine star up and that was Chaim inside him. So inside man God dwells. You know what I'm saying? The Spirit of God moving in inside that idea. If you go to um, uh, 1 John chapter uh, 4, 13, Right? You want to see that. Got it, okay? It says in 1 John's, not John's, 1 John, chapter 4, verse uh, 13. Anybody got it? Read it. Hereby know me that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. You see that? Now read back to 12 and see what you get. No man has seen God at any time. Uh -huh. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. But it deals with man, no man. And then when you go down to 13 again, it says, Hereby what? Know ye that we, I'm sorry, know, yeah, know ye that we what? Dwell in him. Uh huh. And? He in us. How is it that we dwell in God and God in us? Because if in fact we have a portion of God in us, then we are still linked to God spiritually. We are still linked to God directly. 
The Father, this is what this is saying, and this is backing up exactly what you're reading when you read Genesis chapter um, 2, verse 7. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, did I get that point? Right. First of all, understanding Christianity as we see it today, where ministers don't know the scriptures because they don't know the language. They don't even aware that the word Adam is there. They can get a Logos Bible, an online Bible, or a Spons concordance, and go along with anybody who speaks Hebrew and open their Bible and ask them what word is there and find out that Adam is there. But when you read with Adam, it makes a big difference because it implies that there was something personal between Adam and God. But if you read it as man, then they can say man is a general statement for man as a whole, as in mankind. And that's what you've been led to believe. But if you, leave, if you see Adam sitting there, then it changes because you don't see Eve right. as a part of the story. Yet. And of course, a woman wants to know, well, where was I at the time? Right. And why was no concern for me? Right. There's no concern for anything that don't exist yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't got down to her existence yet. We're pre her existence. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with a man. You follow that? Mm -hmm. and, that and, and that God knew this Adam so well, he even knew Adam needed a mate. How did he know that? Because he knew himself. He knew he was in need. He knew the nature of man. You follow that? Go ahead. Um, in this verse, like you said, it's only speaking about man. Right. So it says the breath of life had to be breathed into man for him to exist. Before and he became a living soul. A living soul. Right. Mm -hmm. And women also have the breath of life in them. Right. So they are living souls. No, they have the breath of life in them. They are living spirits. Why don't we have a living soul? Because he didn't give you his soul. But you were merely bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh according to the Bible. That's what it says in the Bible. Now, if you want to step into physics, you want to go into, you know, if you want to stay in the Word of God, the Word of God, you're going to hear that woman is merely. It said he took a man, put a man in a deep sleep, and out of man took his rib, as they would say, and there he took and made a woman. And then he called her woman because. She was of man. She was not of God. She was of man. What's that quote? Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Somebody read it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he, slept. Go ahead. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Okay, go ahead. And Adam said... Now we gotta, we gotta go to uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 22. And the, go ahead. and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And, go ahead. Ad and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Taken out of man, not taken out of God. Woman was not taken from God. Woman was created in the image and the likeness of man. Now, if you go into all the new science of mitochondrial DNA, which you can, you step outside of the Bible. You step into the scientific community, and there is a difference. The man, and, and you can you can make some strong arguments that women do physically predate men scientifically. But when you start dealing with science, you step out of religion. You know what I'm saying? Some men will say no. Some preachers will say no. They're lying to you. When you start dealing with science, it's going to beat the heck out of this Bible that you say you believe in. And he ain't going to be able to defend himself against scientific doubt. But if you say you follow the word of God and that there's a hidden meaning behind everything that's in here, then you're stuck to accept that reality that a woman is in the image of a man and man is in the image of God. And God breathed his breath of life into a man. And that man became a living soul. And then from that man he made to only only because they specified in Genesis. Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. They were specific. They didn't have to say that. They were saying she is physical. Go ahead. So the, does that make woman less of a creature in comparison to man in, in religion? Yes, it does in a sense. It does in a sense because it appears that even uh, the serpent in Genesis knew to go to the woman because she was weak. He didn't even go to Adam. He knew that the woman can be tempted by uh, things pleasant to the eye, good for food, and desires to make one wise because she, because she didn't get the commandment, Adam did. And she wasn't there 
the serpent knew she didn't get the commandment, so she, the serpent knew to go after her. Yeah, go ahead. Is that, is that why a woman was supposed to submit to man? Or? Well, she was never created to submit. She was created to help. The Bible says woman was created as a helpmate to man. And the Lord God said in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, it is not good that man should be alone. Again, here we have the word man. You look in the Hebrew, you see the word Adam. Read it again with Adam. In. And what? And the Lord God said, it is not good that the Adam should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. See that? I'm going to make him an assistant. Someone to help him. That's her place. Nowadays, for the serpent's people, have women thinking they're supposed to be in front of men. And you want to know why we're falling apart. And why the world is falling apart. And why our societies are falling apart. And why our families are falling apart. And why there's so many lonely women. Because women, by the, by the, by the devil's power, is now stepping out of her place. And the devil is giving her the platform. You can make as much money as your man. You ain't got to be subject to man. You don't have to walk behind a man. You don't have to. But all, he got all these things that he has our women doing. And now they're walking around in positions all up in the government with opinions where they do not belong. They are now that they ain't got themselves in the war and they're out there in uniform, women getting ready to go to the battlefield. Women as policemen. Women as firemen. I watched a uh, video once with a woman, a woman police officer just got their head beat out on the highway by some, some man because she, she got that uniform on and that uniform fooled her for a moment and to begin it she was a woman and she dragged this man out of the car in front of his little his kid and he just beat the dog on officer down like a dog for male officer. It would have been a hell of a lot more difficult or more, I just said, it would have been a heck of a lot more difficult if that was a male officer. But they're pushing you into this. They're moving you up in there. Because they're taking you out of your role. When they take you out of your role, they automatically pull us out of our role as, serv as servants of God. We come right out of our role, trying to compete with you as you try to compete with us in this world. That's a strategy. Uh, Reverend, according to the Bible, Which, where? Uh, well, according to religion. Okay. Religion, what are the benefits of having a soul? What are the benefits of having a soul versus a spirit? your direct contact with God, why most of the prophets were men. Because they had God still had a link to men. You follow that? Yes. yes you want to say something? I'm confused now on the existence of a soul because women bring babies into the world. Right. So how does a soul differentiate between a man and a woman? Because the soul will be traveling on the semen of the man. Because when a man is getting ready to e e ejaculate, see, the semen goes through his body and up to his brain, back down the spinal column, past the seminal vessel, through the prostate glands, and on out. But he goes, why does it go up to the brain? Why can't it stay in the scrotum, produce everything down there, and just go out? Why must it make that journey up the spinal column and touch the brain? Because up there, when it gets to the top of the brain, that's where it makes contact with that divine spark. Now that the women don't have a spark of light, but there's a spark of life and a divine spark of life in the Bible. One has two yards in it. It has chayim, two yards. One just has hey. Both of them are there for living, but one is chayim, and it implies a divine being. You follow that? Go ahead. So women don't have that direct connection with God. She can obtain it. She can obtain it because the Bible says that that man is supposed to cling onto her and they become one. When they become one flesh, then they're sharing body and soul. You know what I'm saying? That's what real love, that's what they just said a little while ago in um, 1 John's. It was all about love. You know what I'm saying? And with that, that, strong, that strong will of love, when you start to share that love, when you break away from love, you start no longer love a man, and no longer, you start, you know, you, you start losing, you become an animal, you become a being that must survive. Not, not an animal in an ugly sense. You become an animal like, you know, I must survive. And when you start having to survive, your women, your femininity starts going out the window. Because you got to get out and you got to change your own tire. Whether it's raining or not, you have to get on your knees out there. You no longer you can break your fingernails. And I can just continue on the many things that happen when that man is not in your life.
when there's, when there's noise banging downstairs, you got to get up and go downstairs and get a baseball bat yourself. And you don't have the will to go up against, you know, or the strength in most cases to go up against a big old brawly man that's coming in to rob or rape you. Whereas a man would get up and go down and deal with that. Not that every man can succeed, I'm not making a man Superman. I'm just saying, those are certain roles that seem to be natural because if you check the animal king, you find out that's how it works. We go out and hunt we bring it back to you. So when he gave us a certain amount of growth, you know, a certain amount of uh, physical stamina, you know, in one respect, because we can't have no babies, we ain't lying about that. Y'all really take that kind of pain, is totally different than ours. But we can roll and tumble and fall in that scar as well, where our skin is tougher. You know what I'm if we look at it from a scientific point of view, like you were saying okay. earlier, mm -hmm. and women, it's known that women were here first, then how did the soul become into existence if women were Okay, here because today? you're talking about a body. You're, so, you're back to talking about a body. Women, when you speak of mitochondria and DNA, you're talking about genes. You're talking about physical things. Right? Before the physical thing, there had to be a spiritual thing. Man was in a spiritual world. Before he was in a physical state, because he was created in the image and after likes of God first. Then later on in the Bible it says he created him on just the ground. But the first creation of man in the Bible, he's in a spiritual state. Then you gotta go further down to find out, and of the dusty ground made he, and then he says male and female created he them. So then he created Adam, a you know, spirit, a spirit Adam, and then made a physical Adam, and then out of that Adam made woman. That's why I said male and female created he them. Right? It says, um, so God created man in his own image. Now let's find out what the image of God is by going to Colossians uh, 1.14. 1 Colossians 1.14. Who is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? See that? Mm -hmm. See yes. that? Mm -hmm. The firstborn of every creature. What did it say before that? Who is in the what? Who is in the, the image of the invisible God? Now let's look back again in Genesis chapter 1. First, you stay right there, sister. And let's go back to uh, verse 27, chapter 1. You stay right where you are, because we're going to need that again. What does it say? It says, So God created man in his own image. In the, in the image of God created he him. So now, what is God's image? Now you read it again. Who is the image of the invisible. Is it a visible being or an invisible being? If God is an invisible being, then this statement that Adam and 27 is created in the image of God, right? Then the first creation of Adam was in a spiritual state in the bosom of God. And then later we go down, we're going to read Bone of God took man of dusty ground. We have to go to um that's, that was Genesis chapter 1, we go to Genesis chapter 2, and look at verse 7. Ready? And right, somebody read it. And the Lord God formed, so what? You know what so what is, is in Hebrew? To shape something, form it. Before it was created, battle Now it's so what? It's shaped. You hear me? Read that. So, so, so what? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And then what did he do? And breathed into him into his nostrils the breath of, of life. And man became a living soul. So that thing which was created in God's bosom for man was transported from God into man. That was soul. You follow that? And that left a link between God and man. A direct link. They were spiritually connected at all times. Thus, when God want to choose a messenger, in most instances, he chooses a man to carry the message. Sometimes they choose a woman to carry a message to a group of people other than the Israelites, like in the case of Esther. You know but that wasn't a divine revelation. And in the book of Esther, you don't find the word God anywhere in the whole chapter. You know what I'm saying? That's a different kind of message. Anybody else? Yeah. What about the, um, the Israelites in the Bora? Yeah, the, um, they have prophets. Do they have a direct connection with God at that time? No. No. They are always students of high priests. 
and in Israel, the high priest called the Levites became the mediums between mortals and God. And even when they built the temple of Solomon, they built it in three degrees. And the only people that can go into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was and talk to God one-on-one -on -one were priest men. Women were not allowed to go or Ruth or anybody else to go inside the Holy of Holies or the Ark of the Covenant was. You never hear about women going there. They wasn't allowed. Because they knew that a woman would go in and she'd be struck dead immediately. And even men had to wear the right cards and costumes to go in power. The presence of God. Yes. So as a Christian woman without a husband, mm -hmm. um, I could be praying to nothing. So God can't hear me when I'm praying. That's not the point. As a Christian woman, you should have a husband. Because the Bible tells you you should. That you should be fruitful and you should multiply. It's this system and this society. And I, want to work, I want to work with this, right? It's this system and the society we're living in that makes you without a husband. Because they create laws that override God's laws. And they become the laws of the land and the laws of man. And then man started acting according to the laws of the land and the laws of man. And they start acting according to the law of God. If men were about living by this book, and not by no constitution or no amendments, and by no law system, they were living by the Bible, then men would, you would not be without a man. You know what I'm trying to say? It's the system that's set up to divide families, to break us down, to change men into change women into men and change men into women even. Mm -hmm. This is all part of a system. They want me and you to obey them over the word of God. And that's why they'll come after a man who has more than one wife. When they won't ever scorn or shame Abraham or Solomon or Rehoboam or Jacob or Esau and a whole host of other men in the Bible who were God's chosen people, they'll never badmouth them for being polygamous. But they'll come out after you. They'll come out and say that you're doing this. They are, and they're forcing you. They're forcing your hand to disobey God. And they know we, by nature, because of our roots being in Africa, Egypt, and the likes, were naturally polygamous. Before they interfered with our natural environment and culture, we were polygamous and you women accepted. Your father, mm -hmm. they started the one wife miserable cheating man. They started. That's why they're so miserable. That's why they sit around with nothing to do but probe into people's lives and try to create gossip. First, they had to create laws called man's laws and supersede God's laws and make every preacher and every woman feel if she and my man gonna get another wife, that's against the law called the bigness. Against whose law? Against God's law in the Bible? Or Allah's law in the Quran? I mean, or Yahweh's law in the Tanakh? Whose law? Or is it some man sitting around and made that law? You follow? And they know in doing that, that me or, and, or any other man who has that blood can't be content. Because that's the animal we are. We were used to having more than one woman, be we Muslims, or Yoruba, or whatever faith. It's only when they introduced us to Paul's version of Judaism. Not even Jesus' version of Judaism, but Paul's new version of Judaism is where they started creating their laws. And Paul was the same one who told them that they don't have to get circumcised and they don't have to keep the Sabbath. He was tearing down the law. And he also added that law. One man, one woman. Now some people say, well, Adam, Adam only had one wife. That's what you think. Right? And if you do a little search, the research you find out that Adam had another wife called Lilith. Because his name wasn't Adam. Adam was describing what he was. His name was Kedman. The Bible also refers to him as Zakar, the one with the extended memory. You follow what I'm saying? This is in the Bible, but it's not in English. It's in the Hebrew, but it's not in English. It's like Eve. Her name is Nakebo in the Bible. Meaning a tribal leader. 
Because there were groups of people. Adam wasn't one man. He was, was a, that was a tribe. That's why you hear in the Bible that a person lived a certain amount of years. They say 135 years, and then they say, and he went on all the days of his life was 900 years. The person died at 135, but his tribe, his tribal name carried on. If I was to have a Kennedy era of family members, now they're coming down to the end of the Kennedy era because they're all dying off. That's a Kennedy era that goes on over, over, over 200 years. Let me trace it back, maybe further. Go ahead. I'll follow your point, right? Go ahead. But in Genesis 24... Which, which, Genesis chapter 24? Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 24. Chapter two, verse 24. Okay, go so with it, say. It says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And cleave unto and his wife. And they shall become one flesh. That's right. Can he cleave unto more than one wife and become one flesh? Obviously, if... If Solomon had 700 wives, obviously, if God blessed Jacob and Jacob had four wives, obviously, if God chose Rehoboam and he had 18 wives, obviously, if God accepted Esau's forgiveness and he had uh, more than one, obviously, because the Bible says this statement in Genesis, but this was before the scripture. This, when, this is when the choices were down to naught. <laughs> It wasn't like there was a whole host of women for Adam to choose from according to this. You know, we're at what they call the beginning. So as man progress down, we get right down, but we don't get halfway out of this chapter before we get down to a man called Lamech. And he got two wives, Ada and Zillah. And that's in the land of Nod already. And there's people already in the land of Nod when he gets there, when, when Cain gets there. And Cain chose to pull a wife out of those people. You know what I'm trying to say? So you're not getting the full story when you read these Bibles in these translations. They pulled out little pieces. You got little pieces, and it takes intense study to see how much they've altered. And that was done purposely to make it something you can't depend on. But see, their laws have sections and chapters and verses and codes so you can feel safe in the law of the devil or man over the law of God. You know? yes. And when you get a person with a religion that has codes and sections, you know what it produces? It produces fanaticism like Muslims. Because they still got a Quran that they think is infallible. It has everything according to nothing. They say nothing has been changed. It's flows. And then they got a whole series of sections of books called hadiths and sunnahs and customs and traditions. It tells them everything to do so they can't shake them. They can't, they can't live, so the women there stay in place. And then America and other countries like that have to look at those women and say, mm, mm, mm. I would never look like that. I'd never put a veil on. I'd never stay in my place. I'd never do this. I'd never, they didn't realize because they don't have law. They didn't put aside, they didn't put aside the commandments of God for the traditions of men, for men's laws. That's also in the Bible. Okay, Mark 7, 8. You want to look at it? You'll find it. I mean, these things may sound shocking today, you know what I'm saying? Because we're so long, so far removed from our way of life that we've now just accepted what the devil feeds us. And now you women start to feel mad at me for telling you God's word. It's almost insults you tell us, I'm a woman with a mind, I'm not thinking myself. Nobody's saying you can, but you do have a place as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter. You do have a place. Just like a man has a place as a father, as a son, as a brother. You know what I'm saying? He has his place. But they removed you. They removed it. And make you now you're so cocky. You're so self-righteous until you can't even find a good man. Why? Because you're breaking men down. You know what I'm saying? Soon you see it, you're tearing into what he is. Trying to tear down his worth. You won't give him a chance to become a man. And you forget it. He's been beat down by a system that won't let him be a man. Can't make his own decisions. I gotta work for them. If I don't work for them, I'm non-conformist. I'm a bum. I gotta go kill for them. If they say we want you to go to another country and kill some people of a different nationality because they have a political difference, so I'm supposed to do it. I'm supposed to violate God's law in Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. I'm supposed to just go over there and drop bombs on people. 
And he's saying, I'm going to go up there and just shoot up people and stab them up in the woods in Vietnam or Korea or whatever. I'm going to do that because a man called Sam told me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's how you know it's a serious thing. If I say, excuse me, I don't kill. Oh, okay, we do have what they call religious objection. Yeah, until Muhammad Ali said it. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali said, well, I'm a Muslim and I don't kill. Mm -hmm. I believe the scripture. They put him in jail for it. You know what I'm saying? So that means they put him in jail for obeying God's law against man. If your daughter and son said, excuse me, teacher, I don't care what you say, I'm standing up and I'm saying this. Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, teacher. And sit down. They might send your kid home, suspend him, and put him out of school. But they want to teach us about wars. They want to teach us about General Lee. They want to teach us about uh, Joan of Arc and Napoleon. People who killed people. People who went to other people's land, like Columbus, and just took it and massacre people and put their flag down there and just say this is now mine like all those people here with their river dancing and crap who came over here in this country where Native Americans live put their flag down be it Irish, Polish or whatever and now they're making laws in this country and imprisoning the indigenous people enslaving the indigenous people making the Mexicans have to break into their own country <laughs> <laughs> now they stepped out of the Bible, it ain't got political. We got presidents that don't belong here. They should be missing checks their roots and say, where you from? Ireland. You supposed to be a president in Ireland. <laughs> you ain't gonna be no president in America. A Native American is gonna be a president in America. You see what I'm saying? And they've got this way of making evil look right. And they'll come down on anybody that shakes their system. Anybody who starts to make it clear, how can you tell children they cannot pray to God in school and then open a textbook and teach them about wars? And teach them they came from a monkey. And don't gather, and don't give it an opportunity to have an opposing, you know what I'm saying, argument. Just now we're going to drop, we're going to drop the God theory and keep the monkey. <laughs> we're going to drop the peace theory and we're going to keep the wall. And you're going to have one wife. And if you have more than one wife, I'm putting you in jail. And you're going to send your school, your kids to school and get educated by me and all these lies. Well, I'm going to put you on the truancy and take your kids. And you better bring yourself to the hospital and you get pregnant so we can inject you with the chemicals. We feel it's suited for you and your baby. Otherwise, we're going to take your baby when you're born. You understand? We're going to make it so you don't have no jobs and you need Medicaid. So when you come to us, we own you and we own your body and we own your child. We put a new organization called Deep Facts. We just come out and take the kid. That's what they want to do. They want to do that because they got new kind of experiments. They find out they can't use rats no more. They find out they can't use hamsters no more. They, got, they can't use monkeys no more. Now they find out in order for them to cure these diseases, 